In this video, I'm going to show you how to write major key chord progressions. Major keys are the most popular choice for songwriting, and for good reason. They are based upon the major scale, which is the most important scale in Western music. They are also easy to understand and use, whatever the instrument you play or however you make your music. You'll commonly see major key chords written out in Roman numerals. These are used to show you the function of each chord in the key. That means how it works and how other chords interact with it to create different sounds for your progressions. The Roman numerals are universal. They are not tied to any particular major key and can be applied to the key of your choice. Here are the seven chords you find in major keys. Uppercase Roman numerals represent major chords, lowercase are for minor chords, and the diminished chord is lowercase with a small circle or degree symbol next to it. If we take the C major key, which I'll use for examples later, then the following chords are used for each of the numerals. One is C major, two is D minor, three is E minor, four is F major, five is G major, six is A minor, and seven is B diminished. These are known as the diatonic chords of the key of C major. Think of these like paint colors. You can take them and mix them in different quantities to create a painting. Because they are all in the same key, they all work together. This means you can simply select from any of these chords when constructing your progressions. But like a game of checkers, there are some simple opening moves that you can use to make more effective progressions. So let's start with the first of these proven ways to write major key chord progressions. To begin, I'm going to dismiss the 7 diminished chord. There's nothing wrong with this chord, and it can be used effectively in certain situations. But it's a bit of a distraction when first learning to create major key chord progressions. The next step is to create another constraint. I'm going to limit the progression to just 4 chords. This will allow us to create what is known as a chord loop, or turnaround. That's just a short progression that can be repeated several times. These are really common in popular music, especially for choruses. The reason they work is because of the position of certain chords within the progression. To further simplify things, I'm just going to play one chord per bar. If you're not familiar with this term, it's a division of time in music. In these examples, and most popular music, there are four beats in each bar in what is known as 4-4 time. All you need to know to make this work is the following formula. Play the one chord for the first bar and then end either with four or five. If you want to know the reasons why these chords function in the way they do, I'll link a video at the end of this one. This formula sets us up to easily create some progressions. You can try out any of the chords in the formula, so I suggest experimenting with what you like the sound of. I'll run through a few examples now to get you started. First up is a common choice. You'll see examples all over popular music that use some combination of the 1, 4, 5 and 6 chords. Arguably the most widely used of these is in the following progression. Now listen to this rearranged version of these chords. Even though no new chords have been used, the feeling of this progression is different. This highlights the importance of the location of chords within your progressions. Always have a go at moving chords about once you've made your selection. Ending with 4 and then 5 is another really popular idea. You can then just plug in a random chord in one of the remaining spaces of the chord loop. For example, let's have a listen to the 2 chord within this idea. So far I've always chosen four different chords for the progression, but you can also repeat chords and stick within the formula. This can lead you to playing a chord for two bars, like the following example. Or you could go back and forth from the same chord, like this. Four bar loops are common and easy to create, but if you use them too often in a song they lose their power and can become predictable. So what can we do to make more interesting progressions? This introduces the second proven way to write major key chord progressions. 
The easiest thing is just to double the length to eight bars. If we use the same rules as before, starting on the one chord and ending on four or five, this now gives us six bars to play with in between. Having a longer progression like this gives you more control over how you want the progression to feel. For example, you can focus more on major or minor chords to create a different vibe for your progression. Listen to this mainly major chord progression first. How does this make you feel? Compare that to this more minor focus progression. This could almost be in a minor key with its sombre feel, but still follows our major key chord progression formula. Probably the most well-known example of an eight bar chord loop is Packlebell's Canon in D, which has featured in loads of popular songs. This can be a great starting point for further chord progression development. The third proven way to write major key chord progressions is to split up your bars. So far, I've only played one chord per bar. The problem with this is it's too predictable. We need to inject a bit of surprise into our music. You're free to play chords for as long as you want. This introduces the idea of harmonic rhythm. How often you change chord will create different rhythmic feels and movement within your song. The easiest way to try this out is by splitting bars in half. In 4-4 time, this means that you'd play a chord for two beats before changing to a new chord. For example, if I take the Packlebell's Canon progression and split up some of the bars, it could look like this. Because of the shorter duration, I've filled in the final two bars with a 2-5-1-4 progression to loop us back around. Split bars can also apply to the four bar loops we discussed earlier. For example, you can go for shorter chord durations than this. Be aware that this can take you into the territory of riffs, as chords are only briefly heard. Also think about whether you can play different chords this quickly on your chosen instrument. Despite this, they are a great way to inject pace and movement to a progression. If you have any important chords that you want to be heard properly, then play them for longer. For example, here's an eight bar chord loop with some more rapid chord changes. I'll keep the first and last chords to an entire bar so they are fully heard and establish the key. Look out for the chord changes that don't fall on the beat. These can really add interest and rhythm. Being able to write major key chord progressions is a critical skill for songwriters, but in order to fully develop your songs, you need to understand why these progressions work. In the video on screen, I reveal a really simple system for understanding the function of major key chords. Watch that now to master major keys.